we have a quick short 10 minute uh, talk which introduces a concept may we have the first slide please have you heard of uh, willy sutton have you heard of an american robber named willy sutton yeah this is about him the lecture is titled horses mules and zebras next slide please Mr. Willie Sutton, uh, in the early part of the 20th century, was the most prolific bank robber in the U.S. He used to rob banks, go to jail, escape from jail, rob banks, go to jail. When a reporter asked him, why do you rob banks and not stores or other places, he said, because that is where the most money is. Okay. He did the obvious thing. That brings us to Sutton's law. It's that when trying to reach a diagnosis, one should consider the obvious first. Right? Next slide, please. This gave birth to another maxim, which is related. It says, when you hear hoof beats behind you, tabadik, tabadik, think of horses. Don't think of zebras. For example, if a patient comes with epigastric pain severe to you, you will first think of gastritis or other things and not think of dissection of aorta as the first possibility. This is a very well-known maxim taught in the college to everybody. I want to modify the maxim a bit. Next slide, please. There's one more animal between horses and zebras, the mule. Next slide, please. My maxim is, when you hear hoof beats, think of horses, not zebras, but do consider the possibility of mules. Okay, my favorite example. A person comes with throat pain. Your horse is pharyngitis or tonsillitis. Your zebra could be anything like pharyngeal carcinoma. But your mule is the most important. Thyroiditis could be a mule. How do you discover the mule? One, you need to know the disease to discover it. Second, you need to know what leading questions to ask and what symptom to concentrate upon. How will you diagnose thyroiditis? So, and... First thing, first rule, throat pain without cough, think of thyroiditis. Will thyroiditis have fever, like in tonsillitis or pharyngitis? Yes. Throat pain with fever, without cough, think of thyroiditis. The leading question is, does the pain radiate to the ear? It will often radiate to one ear because one lobe of the thyroid is usually involved more commonly in the, than both. Radiation to the ear in a patient without cough, throat pain, even if he has swallowing difficulty, you will diagnose clinically the mule and not the horse. Correct? Okay. Uh, can we play a game here? Mm. Epigastric pain in a person who has consumed alcohol the previous night. What is the horse? Alcoholic gastritis, right? But if you stop at that, you have killed the patient sometimes, right? So where, when will you think of, what mules will you think of? Pancreatitis, myocardial infarction, and do you know that gallstone colic can also occur in the epigastrium? Gallstone disease, right? That is your mules that you cannot afford to miss if a patient comes with epigastric pain. We'll talk more about mules all through the three days. Uh, I went to Kenya last year, did a Masai Mara safari, met a doctor who was practicing in Kenya, practicing in Kenya, and I told him that there are a lot of zebras in Kenya. 
more zebras than probably horses. Then how do you teach Sutton's law? <laughs> and he gave me a very good statement. He said, next slide please. Think zebras, but not pink zebras. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.